If you're like me, you use Microsoft Office almost every single day in your nine to five job. So I'm a project manager and I have to use Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Teams, and all those other Microsoft apps all the time. Hey everyone, Tech Dad here, and today I'm gonna give you eight tips that I use every day when I'm using my iPad Pro at work to get through the process of using Microsoft Office without ripping your hair completely out. Because on my channel, that is the number one biggest complaint is trying to use Microsoft Office on the iPad. It's one of the biggest hurdles for everybody, especially when you're used to using this software on Mac or PC. But fear not, I've been using my iPad Pro as my only computer for about 18 months now, and I am well versed at using Microsoft Office on my iPad. It's actually pretty fun once you get the hang of it. So without further ado, let's jump into these tips. All right, number one, use multiple windows. That's the first biggest thing that you need to know how to do, and I'm surprised that a lot of iPad users don't know how to do this. So iPad OS 26 has launched Launched, and now you can open all kinds of windows all over the place and you've just got a lot better control on how you want those windows to appear on your screen. So just open an app and then you can resize it if you want to and then you can use the menu bar to actually open a new window. Do this all the time when it comes to Microsoft Excel and you can use those stoplight buttons to put those windows on each side of the screen or you can just flick those windows with your finger and they'll automatically size perfectly to each side of the screen. Then you can copy and paste in your Excel sheets to your hard delight it's so nice all right tip number two is use drag and drop which once again requires opening multiple windows so a lot of people can't stand the filing system inside the iPad they don't want to go dig up a file or a photo that they save somewhere so for example if you're in Microsoft Word and you're typing up a report on the Civil War and you want to add an image just pull up Safari right next to it and then you can find the image that you want literally press and hold and drag it on over to the Word doc that saves so much time when you're moving images around then you can clean up your image, resize it, and even put a little border around it. Good to go. So try using drag and drop. You can also drag and drop files into email. So if you open up Outlook and you make a new email and you want to put a file in there, just open up the Files app and drag and drop your file into Outlook. It's very easy and simple to do and saves you a ton of time so you don't have to look things up or go digging for files. Drag and drop saves you a lot of clicking, so try it out. All right, tip number three, make sure you're using keyboard shortcuts. So so in all the Microsoft apps, keyboard shortcuts are critical. And if you don't know the keyboard shortcuts, you can actually look in the menu bar. So for example, if you look at edit, you can see that the command V is for pasting and command C is for copy. Those are the really simple ones, but there are all kinds of keyboard shortcuts that can really speed up your work. I really like paste as plain text so you can get rid of formatting. That is a super popular keyboard shortcut and it's command, control, shift, and then V. So you can plop text into another app or a Microsoft app and it gets rid of formatting if you need it to. Such a useful tip. All right, the next tip is use AI. Are you still drafting your own PowerPoints? Yeah, you don't have to do that anymore. There are some great AI tools out there and today's sponsor is AI PowerPoint. And this is a software that is a web application and it will literally draft PowerPoints for you in like a few seconds, like literally. A few seconds so you can just pull up AI PowerPoint and let's say I wanted to make a PowerPoint on agile principles and project management that's near and dear to my heart well a great way to get started is to use their dynamic slides feature so you can just select dynamic slides and then you can give the AI a prompt and off it goes in a few seconds it spits out the whole PowerPoint presentation for you complete with text and graphics and images the whole shebang I don't see any reason why anybody is starting from scratch on a PowerPoint these days not when we have AI. In addition, they have over 200,000 templates that you can choose from, that you can filter and whittle down, and select the one that makes sense for your presentation. But Tech Dad, what if I want to edit the images and the text? You can do that. So once your PowerPoint is generated, you can jump into it and start editing the images. There are some quick, easy buttons where you can click and add extra text and graphics. You can even change the AI-generated images. These aren't stock photos, they're actually AI-generated. You can go in, change the prompt, so if I want this picture to include two people and not four because I think it's too busy I can just change the prompt and boom there it is it's really incredible and then when you're done making your PowerPoint you can present it in the AI PowerPoint software or you can export it and then just load it right into PowerPoint on your iPad and present from there or continue your edits the content is appropriate the slides are clean it's absolutely amazing you've got to try it I will leave a link in the description below so you can check out AI PowerPoint and using my exclusive code will get you an extra 10% 
20% off. But yeah, skip the busy work and let AI help you out. All right, next tip, use the OneDrive app if you're absolutely forced to use OneDrive. So there's all kinds of cloud storage solutions. Microsoft uses their app called OneDrive and it does not play well with the files app from my experience. So I like to just download the app itself and use that app to manage my Microsoft files. So OneDrive does not support drag and drop, but you can create folders within the app and you can also create new documents, presentations and spreadsheets within the app. And I like doing this because I know it's gonna save right back to the location where I created it. So I think it's a good clean way to start a new document. So make sure you download that OneDrive app. All right, for the next tip, if you can't figure something out, try touching the screen. Remember the iPad is a touch screen first and though you can attach a keyboard and trackpad to it, you really wanna use the touch screen when possible. Sometimes it's just easier to select text by using your finger than actually using a trackpad. It's kind of crazy. Plus there are other touch controls that are built into the software. So for example, if you make a comment, you can actually press and hold on that comment and you get some extra controls like editing the comment, for example. So it seems like some things just work better when you use the touch controls. All right, next tip, use the apps mostly. And when I say the apps, I'm talking about Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. There is an app called Copilot that kind of puts them all together. I don't like using that. I think the apps are better used when they're separated. For one thing, it allows you to open multiple windows and that Copilot app doesn't let you do that. Now, you might say, well, there's a few features missing in those apps. And yeah, there are a few features missing if you're a really high level user, but I find that you can actually just go to the browser version of Word, Excel, or PowerPoint if you absolutely can't find a feature that you need. The browser opens up a few more options that are similar to the desktop version. So if there's something you can't find, try going to the web browser version. All right, the last tip is the more screen, the better. So iPad Pro and iPad Air, pretty much any iPad with an M chip in it will support a secondary display. So use one. If you're gonna work on these office apps, it's definitely great to have as much screen real estate as possible and you can spread out your windows even better that way. It's really important to have a secondary display, especially if you're gonna be sitting down at a desk crunching out work for a few hours. Don't limit yourself just to the iPad display. They're small enough as it is. All right, those are my tips for using Microsoft Office on your iPad. I hope this helped. If you have other questions, please leave a comment below and I'll take a look at those. That's all I got for you. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.